Hello and welcome to church today. Welcome to Easter Sunday, to Resurrection Sunday. So good to have you joining us. Uh, I should say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, amen. <laughs> My name's Joe. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm joined by Nikki. Good morning. Good morning, Joe. It's Hi, good. Pastor Joe. It's what so a- good. <laughs> Things are looking a little different this morning for yes. online church, aren't they? Yes, yeah, we're yep. coming to you from the foyer this morning. Going to be out here all morning this morning having a big family celebration. We're going to break bread together later on. So if you're joining us live and online, in about halfway through our gathering today, we're going to just stop and eat together and we're going to have a chat with different people at that time. We're going to have baptisms today. We've got all sorts of great stuff. This morning, we were up Mount Kutha. Yes, yeah, very early. yes. I made the journey in the dark up, up the mountain. And, it, you know, it's just so special, I think, too. Um, I don't know, for me, as I was journeying up the mountain, I was given the gift of perspective. You know, as you journey up, you start small and you go up to the Lord's perspective. And what a great gift of perspective Easter Sunday is, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. I just love the, the, the fresh start, it feels like, mm. when that sun rises. And as you know, a couple of hundred of us are praying over our city together, it was just so beautiful. Mm. And being able to worship together too. So we're going to do a whole pile of different stuff today. So really excited for you to join us throughout the service. Nikki and I will check in every now and then and all sorts of things. But right now I'm going to hand over to Pastor Nick. He's going to lead us into our time of worship together as a family today. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can you see me? I'm just around the floor here. I'm trying to make my way around to say hello. But uh, good morning, good morning to everyone gathered here. So great to have you. He is risen. Amen. He is. John 11, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in me, you too will experience that same life. Amen. And that's what we celebrate today, that uh, Jesus has conquered death. And uh, what a day of joy. What a day of celebration. What a day of unity and family and for us to come together. So it is so great to have you here. Uh, I hope that you really uh, just feel at home out here in our foyer. And I hope you've maybe already introduced yourself to the person on your left and your right just to say g'day and to say happy Easter. And uh, we're really looking forward to celebrating with you. Uh, Today is a day to participate, church. It's a day not to sit back, but a day to really lean in, okay? We're going to worship the Lord in just a moment. Uh, We have some baptisms today, praise God. And uh, I want to let you know too that if throughout um, our time together today, you feel a nudge at all from the Lord to uh, be baptized, to declare your faith, Uh, There'll be opportunity for you to do that as well. We have um, enough clothes and towels and underwear for a small school to use. So uh, we've got you covered, okay? Um, So you can come at any time. Just uh, let myself, Pastor Joe, let anyone know. Let them know you want to get baptized and uh, we can make a way for that to happen throughout our gathering. So uh, yeah, that is just fantastic. Was there anyone this morning who got up to Mount Kutha at sunrise? Can you give me a wave? Anyone? at all over here. Okay, I'm going to come over here. I just want to find out a little bit of like what it was like. Was there anything at all that you were sensing that God was doing or saying or just what were you thankful for when you were there this morning? I was thankful for a great gathering of people who all wanted to celebrate the Lord and watching the sun come up too is a great um, picture of what it was like for Christ. Amen. Amen. That was so good. We had our prayer hike there yesterday as well um, in the morning where there's some people that came on that. Uh, It was so fantastic to get up the top as well and to just sing and and pray together and um, to really embrace the journey of Christ. Anyone else want to share from this morning at Mount Kutha at all? Give me a wave and I'll I'll run to you. Yes. Yeah. um, I was severely injured last night. Um, so I thought I couldn't come to the service, but I was praying and I miraculously healed. So praise God, praise God that I'm able to worship in the church. Yeah. Wow, thank you, Lord. <laughs> praise God. So, yeah, w- what happened? Like, um, I invited some guests for Easter lunch and I was cleaning everything, including um, the garden. So there was something and I slipped. So I couldn't get up the whole night. But in the morning, I just woke up and... Uh, um, praying God, I, I want to be, uh, you know, with church and I want to be in the service. So, uh, next minute, yeah, I can walk. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Praise God. So you couldn't walk yesterday, but you can today. 
Amazing. Hey, if, uh, if you need prayer today, come to Latha, hey? Latha will pray for you, and she'll be like, I've seen what God can do in my life. Let's, let's see him do it in yours. Uh, anyone else that wants to share? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, while we look for over here, yeah, so good. Um, kids ministry as well throughout this time. We do have a, a bit of a space set up down through the foyer through there where there is um, some, you know, coloring pens and activities, but um, feel free to stay with us for worship at the start um, as we sing a few songs together. And Pastor Patria is going to also speak to his kids, so that's going to be really, really great um, together. So, yeah, but is there anyone else? I think over here I saw a hand. What were you thankful for this morning? Just as the sun rose above the clouds, it was just really beautiful and just a great way to worship God. Yeah, come on. Amazing. So good. And over here, yeah, let's get every section if we can. I love this. There's something about driving up Mount Kutha in the dark and understanding how Mary and the, the other women must have felt. Just the uncertainty of it and then getting to the top and being able to worship with all of God's people and have just a little tiny sense of how amazing it must have been. Yes, absolutely. That's so great. Anyone from this section over here want to share with us at all anything that anyone make it up there this morning? Just want to make the opportunity. It's okay if you, if you didn't get up there, but uh, so good. Awesome. Well, we are going to worship together and... Uh, we also, you might have noticed on your way in that there were some tables with some bread and some hot crust buns on it. Uh, we're going to have a, a specific time together in the middle of our, our gathering this morning to break bread together and to uh, celebrate and share. So don't touch the bread or the hot crust buns just yet, all right? Can you, can you use self-control for a little longer? And uh, then we'll let you know Pastor John's going to lead through that with us. And that'll be fantastic. There's more than enough bread for everybody and more than enough hot crust buns. But for those that did bring and did contribute, uh, thank you so much for being part of this morning and for yeah, blessing us in that way. It's going to be a really lovely time together. All right. Why don't we stand to our feet, church? We're going to worship the Lord, our God, who is so worthy of being praised today. The only one who has been resurrected. The only one who defeated death and conquered sin. And now he says, what is mine is yours. What is mine is yours this morning. So celebrate, rejoice, for it's for every person of every age, from every tribe and every tongue. He is risen and he has conquered the grave. And today we say hallelujah and glory to God. Let's thank the Lord together. Yeah.
master, I thank the Savior, because you heal my heart, change my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the master, I thank the Savior. Come on, let's thank God together this morning. Thank Praise you, Lord. Lord.
a powerful name. Can we all say amen? Amen. Do I have any children in the room? No children? If you're a child, would you come and sit here in front of me? I have something very exciting to tell you about. I'm going to face this way. So boys and girls, if you're sitting in the chairs, you can't see anything. Come on over. Now, adults, if a child just left a chair, now's your chance. All right. All right, boys and girls. Boys and girls, I have something very exciting to tell you. Is anybody been on a hunt today? Did you go hunting for vegetables? Oh. Boys and girls, sometimes at Easter, we get to have a very special treat. And it looks a little bit like this. But do you know that Easter eggs are actually very special. I'm going to show you why Easter eggs are very special. Are you watching? Is it special because it's delicious? Is it special because it's chocolate? Oh, let me tell you why it's special. Mm, mm, that's very good. Do you know why it's special? Because what's inside? Are you sure? Look again. Is there anything inside? Oh, do you know... Easter eggs are special because, oh, let's see if we know, it's a risk. Because Jesus, the tomb was empty and the eggs are hollow like the empty tomb. That's right. So boys and girls, do you know today, I have 200 Easter eggs. But there's something special that we do when we see the empty tomb. I think the adults can help me out here. Let's see if the adults know. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, boys and girls, what I want you to do is this time I want the boys and girls to say he is risen and the adults will reply. Are you ready? One, two, three. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, that was pretty good. Now, boys and girls, I have some special adults who have an Easter egg for you. But before we enjoy our Easter egg, I want you to take one bite and look inside and say to the adults around you, as loud as you can, he is risen. And it doesn't matter if lots of people are talking at the same time when we do it. We want to hear, he is risen, he's risen indeed, all over our church. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Oh, because our Easter eggs are special, but they're special because they represent that the tomb was empty because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Well done. All right, I have some special people with baskets, so they're going to come on over, and I want you all just, I think, just spread them out amongst the kids. I think that's going to be the best way to go. Sitting down, boys and girls, sitting down. And then adults, they're going to run back to you, and we're going to have lots of he's risen indeed as we worship. So we're going to begin to worship again. And as you take that bite, you're going to say, He is risen because the tomb is empty. Let's worship Him for that. And death could not hold Him down, for He is risen.
Let's just sing that one more time. Death could not. And death could not hold him down. And for he is risen. He is risen. And seated upon the throne. it up to Jesus this morning. He's worthy of all of our praise, of all of our glory, of all honor. Yes, Jesus, you're worthy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. praise and honor and glory this morning. We thank you for this day where 
we can thank you for your life. Lord, your life that you took back up on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, as you rose out of that grave, as you conquered death and sin and brokenness in this world. Lord, as you did that, Lord, by your choice, because of the power of the Father and the Spirit that worked in you and through you, Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you that we can stand here as family. We can stand here as brothers and sisters because of what you've done for us. So we praise your name today and we give you all the glory, Lord. Amen. 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 One of the beautiful things we get to do today is we get to celebrate baptisms as well. So if you want to grab a seat, feel free. Uh, if you're in the bank over here near the big white wall in the baptistry, you're going to have people getting baptized just near you in a tick, but that's okay. Baptism, though, if you're not familiar with what we mean when we do baptism, we've got a big tank of water over there. And what we do is is follow the instructions of Jesus. He said, believe and be baptized. And then he said at the end of Matthew's gospel, to go into all the world, baptizing people, making disciples, teaching people about who Jesus is and what he's doing in this world. So today we're going to have a little experience of that. But it's, it's this beautiful moment where God works in the moment and works through the moment to speak out the good news. It says this in Romans chapter 6. Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. As the people get baptized this morning, go under that water, it's like they're being totally engulfed by water, like Jesus was totally engulfed by death. And yet, as they raise up out of that water, it's the same way that Jesus rose out of the grave. So we are acting out today the truth of what Jesus has done on that very first Easter weekend. So we're going to have a couple of people share about their journey, about why they're getting baptized today. But I do want to remind you that today, if the Lord's been speaking to you, if he's been touching your heart, we'd love you to have the chance to get baptized as well today. So while the baptisms are happening, if you see Pastor Grant in the white shirt over there, he's very tall. If you would like to get baptized, go and have a chat with him. We've got clothes and all sorts of things for you to get changed into. But if that's you, you can think about that and pray about that while we get into uh, our baptism. But I want to invite Ella up. Where's Ella? She's oh, oh, they're over here. I'm coming over here to the baptisms. We're going to do it over here. Oh, there you are, guys. This is like being online host this morning. Caleb's up first. This is Caleb. He's going to share a little of his journey in the Lord. Let's welcome him. Thanks, Joe. Um, if I haven't met you, I do know some of you, um, served with someone juvie, but I, yeah, my name's Caleb, um, and I'm going to testify to the love, power, and goodness of God in my life. Uh, when I was 10, uh, I was swimming at Rainbow Beach, and I got caught in a rip um, with some family members. There was no way back to shore. Uh, all I could do was kind of bob down to the sand, you know, push myself back up, take in some air, and then underwater again. Um, couldn't save myself. It's the closest I've come to dying. I was, I was probably pretty terrified at the time. Um, and yeah, I couldn't save myself. Much of my teenage and adult life, to be honest, has felt a lot like being stuck in a rip. I could remember making a commitment to Christ at about eight, um, but through high school and adult and working life, things kind of changed for me. Um, I encountered and struggled with loneliness, depression, pornography, anxiety, overworking, and tying my worth and identity to what I could achieve or accomplish or how smart I was. I tried to fix my life. Maybe you've been there too. Um, By working harder, being more disciplined, knowing more about God, praying the right prayers, uh, even studying philosophy, searching for wisdom. Nothing changed. Nothing. Like being stuck in a rip, I'd get up for a few weeks, maybe months, even years at a time, but soon be back underwater, drowning while going through life. Over and over, year after year. Like David writes in the Psalms, my sin was ever before me and my nights were filled with tears. My identity, worth and hope were obliterated, I would say. Obliterated. At the darkest times, and there were a few of them, I wished that I actually wasn't living. I longed not to live. I now know that the enemy had convinced me of two lies. That I was alone and always would be alone that I was not loved and never would be loved. Maybe you've felt those lies uh, in your own life as well. 
God has undone both of those lies as my friends have walked alongside me. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Paul. God has spoken to me and been with me through prayer, friends, worship, creation, and a hundred other ways, including at River Life. I've been seized by the power of His great affection, His great affection for us. And as He has pursued me through His presence and words, He has said this to me over and over again. You are my child. I love you. Over and over again, He tells us, tells me, tells you, I love you. I love you. I love you. I will never leave you. I love you. I'm getting baptized because I think I would be dead without God's embrace and his love. So I put to death the old life of self-sufficiency and self-worship. It drowns right here in water. It drowns. I accept and know that God is strong in my weakness and his love is enough for me. If you feel like you're stuck in a rip, and drowning in life. Stop trying to save yourself. You can't. Amen. Look at the cross there. And the cross we've had in church all week. As Pastor Tria pray, uh, spoke this week. In Jesus' death, my burdens, darkness, sin, pain and fractured identity, a whole loveless way of being and living, all these died there too. He offers the same for you today. Even if you think you've known him for a long time, and you're still drowning in life. He's offering the same thing today. Then look to that empty tomb in the Easter egg. Christ has the power to save your dead and dying life. He longs to share his very own resurrection life with you. Receive life in him. He is whispering and knocking on the door of your hearts now. Some of you, I love you. Come home. I love you. I love you. I love you. I now live in the mystery uh, and of the internal embrace and the infinite love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I am always loved. God is always with me, and I'm no longer swimming uh, through life, but I'm walking on the water with Jesus, and my eyes have ever fixed on my beloved Jesus. Amen. Wow. Thank you for that powerful testimony. And we have two beautiful kids with us today, Ella and Josh who have been asking for quite some time to get baptised, Ella, quite a long time. And, um, and we are going to get baptised today. And they've written a few short sentences about why they've made this choice. Um, do you need your paper? Oh, then she, it's in her mind. That's good, Ella. Um, and uh, I just want to share, even Ella, God has been speaking to Ella even just the last couple of days about how he's with her in this moment. And so this is a powerful thing for our kids to do to declare that they love Jesus and want to follow him all the days of their life. So, Ella, will you share with us? I want to be baptized because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody can come through the Father except through him. These are some words that I thought of. Um, baptism, Jesus, and God. Follow Jesus, kindness, being refreshed, choose him, new life, his joy, his peace, his love. I want to get baptized because I want to encourage others to know God and to get baptized too. And I know that God is my savior and he's always by my side. I can ask him anything. Because of Jesus dying for me, I can talk to him. I'm, for, I'm forgiven because of Jesus. That's why I want to get baptized. Amen. Well, let's just celebrate as we do these baptisms. Wonderful. So Pastor Nick is going to baptize Caleb, and then Pastor Patria will baptize these two awesome little guys. And then uh, Patria will stay in the tank if any of you would like to get baptized. But... She's going to be there. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, she's ready for the task. Uh, as they come into the tank, there's just two simple things that are asked. And the first is that, do you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour? And when they answer that, yes, then we ask, uh, do, you conf- do you promise to follow Jesus in his church, wherever that may be for the rest of your life? When they say yes, we baptise them at their confession uh, of faith in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they're going to gather around. So just, uh, just be part of this, just uh, be praying and being paying attention as we baptise them.
pray while we pray for each person who's baptized. Let's agree in prayer together as we pray for Caleb now.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How good is this? We're going to continue to worship. We've got baptisms. We just had Denise baptized. And this is Joseph being baptized. Let's celebrate him in the Lord right now. Awesome. We're going to pray for Joseph now too. But why don't you all stand to your feet as we continue to worship, as we still have another song of worship to go. Uh, let's continue to celebrate the Lord as uh, people continue to be baptized this morning. Father God, we thank you that you, your blood, it washes us clean. It seems just so amazing that we celebrate this day, that we can live and live a life full in you because of what you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus, that over this whole weekend we've been out, and indeed this week and the lead up to it, we've stopped, we've turned, we've reflected, we've seen what you've done upon the cross the way in which you've given up yourself and your life for ours. And that today we celebrate you risen, 
alive and well and the fullness of life that we have in you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, praise you, worship you, our holy living God. And everybody said, amen. Well, that's not the end of our service, but we figured that you might be hungry. And so we'd like to break bread together. We'd like to just take a moment to stop and, uh, and share in uh, just the simple breaking of bread, as family does. Uh, and on a day like today, we couldn't think of a better way to do it than here with you all. Uh, but I'm going to let you know how to go about doing that so that it's not a complete bun fight. Did you see what I said there? Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to be able to do. Uh, at each table, and I'll tell you where they are in just a moment, at each table there is a gluten-free option. So if bread's not normally your deal because of a gluten thing, there are gluten-free options at every single table, okay? So just watch out for the basket that says gluten-free. If you're not gluten-free, please leave that for those who are so that they don't miss out. There's plenty to go around. Uh, so uh, come and share together. So if you're in the cafe, Okay, so if you're seated in the cafe, not on the carpet, but in the cafe, outside cafe area, there is a table out there. You could, you best to go out there, okay? Uh, so if you're in there. If you're in this section here, okay, you're on the carpet and you're in this section around here, I'm looking at you right now, you can head back over towards the lounge. There's a table over there right behind you. Now, if you're in this area over down towards uh, the, the kids' zone into the welcome area down there, there's a table just outside reception that's just magically going to appear. If it hasn't already, it probably is around there. You can do that. And if you're in this sort of section here, uh, there's a table out under the portico for you. Why don't you find some new friends? Why don't you grab a plate? You can come back in and eat it in here. Yes, I'm even saying that. You can come and eat on the carpet, okay? You can stay and vacuum it later too for me. But anyway, uh, come, and, come and eat, come and share, find new friends, um, spend five, ten minutes. I don't know how long we're going to do this for, but um, go, go and enjoy yourselves. Uh, spend some time in community with one another and then I'll, you'll hear my voice. I'll rally you back in and we're going to read the Word of God together, okay? Awesome. Thanks so much, John. So it's so exciting seeing all these baptisms oh. and everything, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. It just yeah. brings that Easter story to life, you know, when you see people proclaiming what it means for them. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I'm so yeah. hot from running around doing all these things. It's so good. Yeah. Um, we're just going to have a lovely time together now. We're going to do a few different things. We're going to have a chat with some people about what it means to break bread together on a special day like this. But I'd encourage you, if you're watching, wherever you're watching this, go grab yourself some uh, some bread to share, some something you can have, just whoever's with you, even if, it's just, if you're on your own today, I want to go grab something to eat so you know that you're part of a community of people all around the yeah. place who are sharing bread together. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, so yeah, you, I just want to point out you're not alone today no. uh, because part of today is that we're part of a family. So uh, we're just going to jump to a short video now and then when we come back, we're going to interview different people in our church body. So you kind of feel like you're part of it because you are. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is yeah, uh, Dan Patterson, a friend yeah. of uh, River Lives, uh, runs a great ministry called Questioning Christianity. And this is him speaking about the resurrection of Jesus. Good Friday. How could Jesus' brutal murder be remembered by this moniker? One might suspect it a ghastly mistake, a misnomer by Easter's chronicler. The Son of God betrayed and beaten, condemned, scourged, crucified, where after a cry of dereliction, he breathed his last, and with him, hope died. The light of the world extinguished as the heavens above went dark. Creation mourned its maker's suffering, and evil left its mortal mark. But how can one death change the world, prompting dark and stormy sky? What really happened atop Golgotha? Why did Jesus die? No doubt Jesus' enemies sought his death to shore up privilege and positions. Stirring up the crowds to call for blood, Pilate caved to their conditions. But don't confuse man's machinations nor credit diabolical designs. Do not believe Jesus was impotent, a helpless victim of heinous crimes. For Christ's suffering on that lonely hill was no accidental execution. The long laid plans of love now made flesh hung there voluntarily as sin's solution. Atonement, the answer to the Christian story's divine dilemma. How can eternal goodness bring forth justice while still justifying sinners? 
the only way, a worthy substitute pays sin's wages to empty evil's ledges. In mocking theatre, soldiers ignorant of scripture shrouded Jesus with our sin, echoing Isaiah's ancient whispers, a scarlet robe they laid on his tortured skin. Bowing down in jest to heaven's high king, they crowned him with our curse, pressing thorns into his brow. Little did they know, creation's scars he would reverse. For Jesus suffered our stripes and carried our cross and died the death we owe. Love's public disgrace, it plundered the grave's claim while delivering to evil death's blow. But why? Why the suffering? Why the cross? Why can't God just forgive? Cannot heaven's judge simply pass over evil? Who cares? Let us go. Let us live. But what of the victims, the brutalized, the tyrannized, and justice cries out from the land? How can holy love pretend sin benign and wave it away in a cruel sleight of hand? It does matter. Each compounding deposit of dark thoughts, cutting words, selfish deeds. Our said consciences bear us no excuse for a love that wanders or grows cold or recedes. The net sum of our exploits, earth damaged by evil, were a shadow of who we should be. The secret cost of transgressions made public, heaven's answer in blood on the tree. The cross is God's logic, a paradox of justice, condemning sin while granting us pardon. A killing death through his dying, Jesus gave up his ghost, with his corpse being entombed in a garden. So speak of Good Friday, this day of atonement, for God's scars tell the story of love. The cross is an open invitation. Trust freely in Jesus for a salvation that comes down from above. again and I think just what I was sharing before one of the amazing things about Easter is that uh, we're part of a family you know it doesn't matter your background your history what you've gone through uh, we're a family together you know uh, and that's what we celebrate today so we're just gonna be heading around and interviewing the family and seeing what today means to them so I've got Pastor Ian here um, Pastor Ian what does Easter Sunday mean to you Wow. Uh, I, I just love this, so this may not come out well. My son has just been baptized, Joshua. Um, <laughs> and I, like, although he's at like the beginning of his life, like seeing Caleb and seeing those older ladies getting baptized, um, it just shows me like we're all one, you know, and, and here around it's such a mess. I love it. There's actually chocolate on the floor right now. I mean, that's... There's just, it's like what I would call messy church, but it's, it's because we messy. Like the building we're in, the way we gather has to be messy because we're messy as humans. And, and I love about Easter Sunday that God knew that he needed to come into that mess as one of us in the mess of a stable and then go through that, that tug and pull and push of life and finally give his life for us so that we can be whole. And I was just thinking, you know, as they get baptized this morning, there's so much about the past. I mean, especially for someone who's older or like Caleb talking about what he's been set free from. But for all of us, much more maybe importantly, this, this thing, this Easter Sunday, this baptism, this Resurrection Sunday points to the future. Um, the future that is free. It's not, it's not easy. It's the mess will continue. But the future is filled with hope and life and goodness of God. Um, we need Him. And I just love how how this today is about celebrating what God has done, that we might have life to the full going forward. You know, the old is with us. We're real about it. Like the old is still there and we, we, we're real about that. There's just like the, the stuff lying on the floor right now and tripping over babies and power cords. That's just normal. But the future is good because God has, has won our future through what happened today. Yeah. Beautiful, such powerful thoughts there. Pastor Ian, thank you. I think Joe is with someone else, so we're going to hand over to Joe now. Thanks, Nick. Yes, I am. I found someone else. This is the wonderful Marg Warren, who's uh, our chair of elders and also just a dear friend. And um, I, she's a, like me, she resonates with me. She's a thinker. She thinks deeply about things. And so I um, just wanted to grab you and just have a bit of a conversation about, like, for you, what is something like this coming together to break bread in this community, people? Like, what, what for you does it hold in your heart? What's this doing for you as you think about this? Um, it just makes my heart, it makes my heart feel incredibly warm because I think that that act of breaking bread together is something that conveys relationship. You don't eat with people, um, eat with people that you don't 
um, have some sort of connection with. And so in this environment where we've got hundreds of people breaking bread together, it shows this that deep connection. And what's yeah. even better is that we're doing it over that shared that shared value, that shared understanding that because Jesus died for each one of us and really one of the last things he did with his friends was to break bread. And then one of the first things he did after his resurrection was to break bread. So that was so incredibly significant to him was to share a meal, to speak with, to talk with, and to actually acknowledge that connection that we have. And so for me, it's the connection between us and the connection between us and God. That's awesome. And, uh, and it's, I think, I just think of things like this are, are doubly important because not everyone's got a big family or a, or a large community. Some of us, you know, um, it's actually sometimes hard to find someone to sit and break bread with. And so doing it in this place is actually expressing the, the family of God. Like, Because it can be a little bit challenging. Like there might be people watching right now who don't have anyone else to break bread with in person. But this is part of being... A, a part of a larger thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, I live by myself and it's one of those things where it's really reminded to me that actually, even though I might be by myself, I'm never really alone. And there's that sense of like deep connection with God being part of it. So even when I'm sitting at a table breaking bread by myself, I know that I'm not alone. And so for anyone who's on our online community and, and you're by yourself, you've got this connection through what we're doing here this morning, but always, always, you know that you are never, ever alone. And that's the power of the cross. That's what God's done for us. He's in us and his spirit's in us. So we're never, ever alone. That's awesome. If you didn't pick it up there, the Marg is the Marg that you'll see in our online uh, church uh, conversation space. This is that Marg. So now you put a, a face to the name and to the kind prayers and lovely encouraging words that she shares. Uh, you've had a big Easter being able to actually sing a lot of uh, beautiful Easter music as well. Just give us like the 30 second highlights of your choral, choral weekend. Yeah, so I've been singing in the Queensland of Stedford and probably my 30 second highlight was um, on Good Friday, um, all of the competition is done for sacred music. And then, of course, yesterday afternoon for me, Welsh hymn singing because I have a Welsh background. And we were, honestly, I'd have been down the pit if I'd been singing much more Welsh music. It was so amazing. So, yeah, that was the big highlight for me. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, that's so beautiful. Well, I think Nikki's found some other people to chat with. So let's, let's throw over to her. Hey, hey everyone, I'm back here again and I found Beck, uh, who's been coming to River Life no, for many, many years now. And Beck, I just wanted to find your answer. Like, why are you celebrating today? Why is today a good day for you? You know, I was reflecting this morning with my little girl Bo, who's four, and we were talking about why does Easter Sunday matter and what does it mean for our life and our day and we were talking about chocolate eggs and all these wonderful things that Easter means when you have little kids and a family and on the way here in the car we were talking about it and she goes you know I think I love Jesus the most because I get to go to heaven one day and be with him and be with everyone that I love and you know she's just little and she's reflecting on um, you know what the meaning is for her and what it might mean and I said you know, it also means he's with us now and he's in our hearts today because of what happened on Easter Sunday. And it makes our life now a, a, a place where we can live in joy, we can live in peace, we have his help, we have his love, and he helps us do that every day. And it's not just about the future and heaven. And we were chatting about that as a family. And I think when I really reflect personally on what today means, it makes my life... <laughs> It makes my life and it makes our family's life, basically everything's okay. Because of this Resurrection Sunday, whatever comes our way, it's, it's resolved, it's already done, it's already finished. You know, let it come because ultimately that tomb is open and whatever happens Friday and Saturday, Sunday is the end. And so if in this life it's 30 years, one year, 70 years, whether it's suffering, no suffering, whatever the circumstances are, in the end, yes, Bo, it is also about heaven, but we have a great life and something to celebrate now, and we have something later on. And I think for us, that's what we hold on to as the most important factor of our Christian faith, is that it makes everything okay now, and it makes sense of the world that we're in. And so without this Sunday, I'd be without that sense and without that meaning, and I'd be lost in what sometimes is just pain. 
and Friday and Saturday would never have had that resolution. And so for me, it's all about the resolution now and ultimately in the future. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Beck. And I think as well, it's funny, um, you know, the conversations you have with your kids, like it really, you know, they ask the questions and then you're like, oh, well, what, what is this day about, you know? And so for me, um, you know, this phrase has been running through my head and it's, um, how often do we tolerate what Christ came to terminate? And I just feel like with my kids, I've been talking about, oh, like what, what, what am I tolerating in my life that Jesus actually came to set me free from? And so we've been talking about that. You know, what fears am I just okay with? You know, what stresses am I letting run my life when when Christ has come to terminate that, I don't actually have to live like that anymore. So that's the kind of conversations I've been having with my kids too. Like, what what freedom can I be, can I be living in now? Yeah, yeah. So Thanks, Beck. Thank you. All right. Happy Easter. I think Pastor Joe has one more person, so I'll throw back to him. And yeah, see ya. Thanks, Nikki. Not just one. I found three people because it's Easter, so why not do family, right? So I found the kind of Wilson Cowan clan or some representation of such. And um, what, one of the things I love about Easter is that it's a family affair. It's a generational thing. And so we've got parents, mm -hmm. son-in-law, there's a bunch of kids as well. Uh, but, um, listen, if you're, what is uh, if you're oh, still uh, eating, that's fine. John's talking Continue in the background. Just ignore him. Uh, uh, what are some of the things that are significant for you down, for Easter? Uh, what, what's, what do you love about Easter? I think it's just reflection on on the fact that you know Jesus died on the cross for us, and it just brings everything together for our faith. Um, the fact Amy was born on Easter Thursday, we met on a blind date on Easter Saturday, and announced our engagement on an Easter Saturday. So yeah. So it's a day all about love, all sorts of love, <laughs> romantic love. Craig, uh, what's the, is there a tradition that you have on Easter weekend? Is there a family thing that you always do? We always get together on Easter, at Easter time. Uh, it's a family time for us all to come together. Yeah. And I hear there's always a pretty good spread of food put on uh, at the Wilson Cowan clan gathering. Is that right? There is. And, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful to, uh, to have Amy and Scott. Uh, they're wonderful cooks. And now we have, we have Charlotte uh, has joined us. So, uh, you know... That's that's an extra one too now to to join in and uh, it's fabulous, amazing. If you ever get the chance to get invited, don't miss it. Dan, as um, as someone who kind of gets to play host and bring it all together, the richness of family for you. How does that play out on an Easter as you sit around a family table? Oh, it's it's brilliant. I mean, it's something where we guarantee all the family are there. They're not going off to friends' places. You know, we we're all together. We we get to enjoy great food. But, um, but it's also just great to spend time with, with all extended family. So not just direct family, but everybody together. And, and uh, I mean, we obviously have a tradition of giving Easter eggs, but we, we try not to give bunnies. We definitely go for the eggs because as Patria was saying, the hollow part is, is it's a big thing and we want the kids to recognize that. So it's really good, you know, yeah. So good. Well, uh, we're about to throw back to Pastor John, who's leading us in a time of Bible reading. So uh, he's going to read through it in just a second. So let's go back to John. If you've got a Bible, why don't you go grab your Bible, get it ready. We're going to open up to John's Gospel pretty soon. But Pastor John uh, will be bringing a word as well. And so after that, we're going to just really enjoy some time together as we finish off our Easter Sunday celebration. Ten, one to ten. Okay, here's a question I've got for you. You can talk about it in your groups together. What stands out to you in the passage? What stands out to you in that passage? Just share with each other, just quickly, just briefly. What stood out to you? So if you're following along at home, why don't you go grab your Bible and open up to John chapter 20. 
and we're going to read through verses 1 through 10 and then 19 and 20. We're just going to spend some time reading John's Gospel. So that's what Pastor John's going to refer to in just a moment. iPhones and Bibles that are open, talking about it. So good. You know what stands out to me in that passage? I don't know what stood out to you. There's a lot of running going on. Anyone else? Anyone else? It's a lot of running. There's a heap of running going on. But you know what also stands out to me that might just be actually a part of that running that's going on? Is the very fact that during all of that running, there is a lot of joy. There is a lot of celebration. There is an enormous amount of excitement about the revelation that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. You know, within three days, Jesus' disciples, his followers, went from heartbroken sadness, complete dismay, a sense of overwhelming hopelessness, to a place where now they are overcome with exceeding joy. And it's all because of the resurrection of Jesus. Those dashed dreams and hopes that he was dead and gone and buried and put in that tomb and sealed away, even with a Roman guard standing out front, meant that all of those hopes they'd had, those dreams that they had, that one day this guy was going to be the Savior, the Messiah, had now turned into incredible excitement and joy because the tomb is now empty. I, I said this up the top of the hill this morning in our sunrise service, that Louis Gigolo talks about the fact that the angel rolled the stone away, not so that it was that Jesus could get out of the tomb. The stone was rolled away so that we could peer in and see there is nobody. Jesus has risen. He's risen indeed. How good is this news? And it's just hard to capture, I think, as we read through passages like that. I think it's hard to capture the exceeding, incredible, amazing joy that they must have been filled with. Just, just stop for a moment, try to put yourself in that place of just how amazing it must have been. Suddenly hope came alive. Now everything he said has been validated as truth because he's been raised from the dead. Everything he had promised to them is now celebrated as truth. You know, they were overjoyed, they rejoiced. We remember Jesus' death on the cross as we did on Friday in quite a, a soberness and rightly so for we remember that it was our sin it was me and you and what we did that, and ha why he had to go to the cross, why he had to then pay that ultimate price of death. But it's also the resurrection. It calls for this joy. It calls for this celebration. It calls for praise and shouts of acclamation that there is new life. All the blessings that came our way through the cross are confirmed as truth in the resurrection. Now we know our sins are forgiven. Now we know we have eternal life. Now we know we have life and life abundantly in the here and now. It's worth getting excited about. It's worth raising our voice of shout a hallelujah to the Lord because of what He has done. And what's more, Jesus promises that we too will be resurrected and given new bodies. As the Apostle Paul talks about in Corinthians, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? It's gone. Physical death could not hold him, nor will it overpower us because he overcame the grave. His followers have the same kind of life he has, eternal and indestructible. You know, Mary, who was initially sad in her loss, 
at the trauma of the tomb being empty, now the first to experience the power and the joy of the resurrection. In verses 15 and 16 in that passage that we read earlier, it says, he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And in one word, her name, Mary, she realizes that this is her Lord and Savior. She heard her name and her response was a desire to embrace Jesus. Her identity affirmed and confirmed in the resurrection now causes her with great joy to want to embrace her Savior. I'm wondering if you know that in your own life today. Do you know the joy and the desire to embrace your Savior, Jesus, because of what He has done for you? Have you heard Him call your name? Have you heard him secure your identity as a son or as a daughter of the living God? And in calling in your name, he presents you with the truth that you too can have life forever with him. All of a sudden, she realized her sins were forgiven, washed clean, her identity made secure in the one who was calling her name. And this would be the pattern for all who hear his voice and respond. Perhaps he's calling your name today. And you, just like Mary, might know that in a moment, your sins are forgiven and you would know your identity. This is the power of Resurrection Sunday. This is the power we celebrate today. Today, we celebrate with great joy, with anticipation, with an excitement, because of Jesus' resurrection. Because he lives, our lives have been forever changed. Can I hear an amen? See, we've been transformed and given new life. With unwavering faith, we trust the Bible because Christ's power over the grave proves that he can and will fulfill every word of his in Scripture. That's great news. That is worth celebrating. Over the last month or so, God has been really helping me to to just reimagine just how exciting it must have been for the women who visited Jesus' tomb only to find out that he'd risen. Matthew's gospel says this, it says that they were filled with joy and they ran to tell his disciples. Mary set the pattern for all who would encounter the resurrection power of Jesus. She immediately ran to tell the good news to others. I'm wondering if you've got the same level of excitement on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, to want to go tell the world that Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. This good news that we carry is carried within ourselves as we take ourselves full of the hope and the faith and the power of the resurrected Lord Jesus into a community at large. We go into our community together to tell the world He is risen. risen. Amen. You see, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, there we go, went to his disciples with this news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them the things that he'd said to her. That's always our role when it's, when it's Easter in here. When it's Easter in here, when we've landed it deep in our hearts to tell someone that he's risen, to tell them They can rely on all that was accomplished on Good Friday because Jesus lives today. You are the message because of what you've experienced. And Jesus called your name. When Jesus comes 
to us in that private moment of knowing we need a saviour and he calls our name. But then he asks us to go public with the good news of Jesus and his resurrection is for everyone. Who will you go to this Easter? As we go into our community together, who is it that you'll break bread with this Easter after today? Who is God inviting you to to take your good news to this Easter? Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, oh, we celebrate today and I ask Holy Spirit that you would give each of us a renewed sense of joy and excitement that you are alive and well that we too, like Mary, would run to tell others, would be so excited and filled with the joy of knowing our Saviour that we would run with excitement to tell of this good news, that you indeed are alive. Lord, that we would respond to you in our hearts and in our lives and in those private moments when you've called our name We know our sins have been forgiven. We know we've been washed clean. And we know that we are secure in our identity as sons and daughters of the living God, that we would go public. We would go public with our praise. We would go public with our celebration. We would go public with our thanksgiving in your name, with your power, Holy Spirit. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. You know, as you leave today, I I wanna just encourage you to do one thing as you go, hopefully, to tell others about the fact that Jesus is alive. I would pray that as you go out, that you would take an invitation to Alpha. We have Alpha starting here, I'll just get the date right, uh, Thursday, April 18th. And uh, Thursday, April 18th, we're gonna have a launch dinner. And the more people, the merrier. If you know someone who has questions about faith or you wanna share the exciting news of Resurrection Sunday with others, invite them along Thursday, April 18th. Grab an invitation on the way out. It's gonna be an awesome opportunity for us as a family, as church, to see people come into the kingdom of God. Maybe it is today that you're here and you still haven't heard God quite call your name and you've got questions. It couldn't be anything better than coming along to Alpha where your questions will be heard and, and we'll share some of the responses of those questions together as we eat and as we journey over several weeks together. And, and, and maybe for the very first time, you'll be able to truly understand what this is really all about, what Easter is all about. And so I pray God's blessing on you, church. I thank you for coming today and celebrating with us. And uh, thank you for, uh, yeah, just the lives that will be lived out in the world over this Easter Sunday, over this Easter weekend, over the weeks to come and the months and years where we would excitedly go desiring to share the good news of our risen Lord Jesus with others. Amen. celebrate with one final song, our living hope, and then we pray you'd have a really great day. Feel free to stand with us, feel free to stay where you are, but uh, we're going to just celebrate. Your name into the light.
got questions today or things you want to talk through the pastoral team and leaders are here and we'd love to just spend that time catching up with you but uh, have a really really blessed day day off tomorrow and uh, into the week we love you thanks for joining with us feel free to stay and uh, connect and chat and hang out but uh, yeah we love you god bless Thanks, Nick. Just a beautiful time to celebrate together there and just beautiful words to finish our time together with. 
Uh, as Pastor John was talking about, Alpha is coming up. If you want to find out more about Alpha, where can they get info? Yeah, so just head to our website, riverlifechurch.org.au slash alpha, and you'll find all the info you need. Uh, the launch night is on the 18th of April. Just come along to that first night. If, if you're not sure, just come along to the first night. We're having a great meal out there. It's so relaxed. Just come with your questions. Uh, everyone is welcome. Yeah. Exactly right. And if you're part of our online community and you only meet online, we personally as Real Life are not running an online Alpha this next term, but all sorts of places do all the time. So if you just head to the Alpha website for Australia, alpha.org.au, you'll be able to find an online Alpha in the terms ahead. Of course, if you are part of our online community, we have online life groups. We constantly have content going out on our YouTube and social media just so that you can stay connected and be a part of this vibrant community that we call home. So thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, what's on the what's on your plate for the rest of the day? Uh, just uh, recovering uh, with the young kids. Detoxing chocolate. From, I'm going to hide eggs from my kids so they stop eating chocolate. From and or we're for? From, uh, no, no, away from. <laughs> okay. Again, no, yes. more, no more finding eggs. Yeah, yeah that's well, it. Yeah. We haven't had any chocolate yet, so oh. we might go home and uh, very, okay. in a very sedate manner have a few chocolates okay. together. Okay, well, and, enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I pray too that you have a really blessed rest of your day and the rest of this Easter and this whole Easter weekend. Thanks so much for being part of our service today, our gathering. I was so grateful to have you with us and bless you throughout the rest of this week.